hi everyone my name is Anita Malavlanek welcome back to my channel welcome back to my channel if you're watching for the very first time please be sure to subscribe hit the subscribe button if you do like my videos give me a thumbs up and if you have questions please leave a comment down below guys let's conversate let's conversate actually I have a question I want you guys to drop like put down below in the comment section if you are a person that has ever had some sort of like a career change what made you make that change why did you leave why did you leave your previous job for you to do whatever you are doing right now it doesn't have to be specific to all like the corporate stuff but what would you say is the main reason why you actually left your job for you to try to do something different i'm like super interested in hearing your responses so please share that with me so yeah if you have read the title of this video you have probably noticed that i have left audit um and i'm going to be diving a little bit more into how i actually didn't i didn't leave audit in its entirety i am still in audit but i'm going to explain a little bit more about that um so yes i have left audit i'm no longer auditing i'm still working with a big four company but I am no longer solely in the audit department. I am now a part of a new department, which is basically the finance and controls department, focuses on financial assurance, um, which is basically financial transformation and controls. Um, so I'm kind of like a control specialist now, but not just that, we also have the financial transformer, transformation side of it, which I'm going to be diving a little bit more into later on in my video, um, explaining to you guys what it's about and all of that stuff. But Anyways, without any further ado, let me actually tell you guys um, my story. So for those of you who actually don't know, I was auditing or I used to work in audit and I have been working in audit for the past five and a half years. And why did I actually decide to leave audit and how did that um, how did that decision come about? So I was auditing for quite a quite a while um, and I just felt like it was time for me to do something different. It was time for me to challenge myself to, you know, do something that I hadn't necessarily done before. And it's very easy sometimes for you to be complacent and for you to be like, oh, audit is everything that I have ever known and has a consequence of it. I'm just gonna be happy with it and I'm just gonna stay there. I feel like this pillow should be more on that side. But yeah, it's very easy for you to be complacent. And I was just at a stage of my life where I was very ambitious, very eager. Um, and by that I mean, I had a, a bigger idea or I had clarity as to what I wanted to do in the future and where I wanted to focus. And I just felt like, fine, I have been auditing, but where I see myself in the future, um, I, might not, I might not necessarily just get there if I am just auditing 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 i need to diversify my skills and my interests so this is basically one of the reasons why i left i felt like i was auditing for too long i had you know i had an awakening if i want to call it that um has to what i felt like i wanted to do in the long term and that required me to diversify my skills and as a consequence of that just that is why i decided to try to do something different um cool how did that come about how did i actually um you know make the decision to leave so i was in my very last business season it's not my last business season but it's the last business season that i was just solely working for the audit department um it was at the beginning of this year it was my last business season and i was just going through it all and i just remember sitting there and just being like no like it's almost like I, I, I had this, <laughs> this awakening that just told me there's something else, like there should be something else just besides me looking forward to business season every other year or, you know, th there needs to be something else and it was just the feeling. I don't know. I think if you speak to anybody that completely left audit at some point in their career, they're going to tell you, they're going to tell you that they knew at that given point that it was the right time for them to make a movement, for them to try something different. So for me, it wasn't any different. It was basically, I'm sitting there in the boardroom with my engagement team and all of that stuff. And internally, right, you're having conversations with yourself and you're just like, I want to try something different. So the moment that I had that, um, feeling or the moment that I knew that I 
want to try something different i was lucky enough to work with a very supportive partner so i actually went i had to sit down with him um you know to be frankly honest i went to him and i was like i don't know if all of this will be ah, i think i want to leave ah, you know and you know he was like let's go and like have some coffee and sit down and we actually sat down and um we spoke about it and he asked me what do you want what do you want to achieve and all of these things and i spoke to him and one of the things that i realized is that a lot of the times you just think oh let me actually just um um you know it's almost like you allow yourself to be overwhelmed to a point of no return before actually having conversations while as if you have these conversations you might just realize that you're talking to people that have been in these businesses for decades literally and they are the best people to give you advice. So when I sat down with them and I told them what I wanted and where I saw myself in the future, he was actually like, oh, we actually have a whole department here um, in this firm, which is the firm that I currently work for, um, that I think you should give it a shot. You know, I really think you should try and, and reach out to that division. I'm more than happy to, you know, um, initiate these conversations, but we have a whole department that actually does that. And I left that conversation feeling so filled because one, I really felt like, first of all, my partner was so supportive. And I also felt like it was, I feel like it was, it was him also recognizing my hard work because he recognized the value that I still had to give to the firm. And as a consequence of that, um, yeah, I ended up having a sit down conversation with a partner that's currently responsible for um, the division that I work for. Oh guys, my braids, <laughs> sorry. I ended up having a conversation with the partner that's currently responsible for the division that I work for. And we had an interview, like any normal, application and I went through the whole process and I got hired. So this is ultimately how I ended up moving to the finance and controls division. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share like this um, pathway with you guys because I do encourage you to sit down with your leaders and to have those career conversations. If you have coaches or whatever it is, you have all these great mechanisms for you to be having conversations about your career that actually help, you know, for you to um, develop in your career path so have those conversations and don't just sit with those um, sort of questions internally when you can you you, ha you have them at your disposal the people that actually make those decisions you have them at your disposal so use them so this is how I actually ended up leaving audit I don't want to sit here and be like I hate audit because I don't any person that knows me knows Anita's a detective a lot of people would be like Anita like she's a little bit blonde sometimes I'm not trying to like say anything negative about the blonde stuff but I mean they sometimes just be, they like ah, Anita sometimes her head is literally sometimes up in the air but one thing they're gonna tell you Anita will add dots like nobody's business it's like I really think I was supposed to order for the FBI and that is really my talent honestly speaking so I don't mind auditing and I love to think and I love to sit and have those discussions um, with you know the top people in the business and my partners my directors and for you for us to be brainstorming and to be like exchanging ideas i absolutely love that and this is why that leads to the next phase of my conversation i haven't completely left audit i still have one audit which is a pca pcaob audit which works perfectly for me um because again the control piece is very important and something that you guys are going to realize is that the skills that you learn in audit it really helps you for you to be able to do a whole lot of things that you want to do and it even helps you to figure out what you want to do in your career if you really um if you try to use um, whatever is at your disposal and for you to be a part of specific conversations or audits or whatever that help you to have a more diversified um, mindset and a whole bunch of to know what your options are basically you'll find yourself in a situation where you have been exposed to something which is what happened to me that makes you realize what you're really good at so for me if I see a client implementing a new system or implementing a new accounting standard or you know trying to figure out how can we change this how can we do that all of these all of this that happens in audit is kind of the same thing that I still do in financial transformation and controls but at a more strategic 
focused way if that makes sense so the two worlds are not mutually exclusive and this is why i wasn't opposed to still keeping an audit not only that but i specifically work in the insurance department large and complex large and complex because you know it's large and complex stuff but anyways i work in the insurance division so i learned quite a lot about the insurance business because you like i literally work with the best in the in the economy when it comes to the whole insurance practice i'm lucky enough to do that at the big four firm that i currently work for and in this new division that i'm currently working in i still work in i still work with insurance clients so i wasn't willing to completely let go of that because the, there was benefit in sitting with these people and in sitting these audit engagements and in doing my audits and I can leverage off that information and that knowledge to bring into this new department. So this is what I mean when I say the two worlds are not mutually exclusive and I personally made a decision to, still, to bring the two worlds together which is what I currently do at the moment in my own little career path. Um, so again, huh, let me bring it let me bring you back. Um, so like I said, I am now sitting in the finance and controls division. Finance and controls, what is it about? The finance piece is focused on the financial transformation bit of things, which I think is quite interesting. And then you have the controls piece, which is basically focused on, you know, the controls environment and trying to, I don't know, sit with the client, see what gaps can you identify? How can we make it better? But outside of that, there's a whole lot of other services that we can provide as well. Um, if a client is trying to, um, I don't know, um, engage in stuff like process mapping exercise, um, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff that we can do in a nutshell. So I'm just trying to give you an idea of what we actually do in a nutshell. What I have found to be interesting is one, the financial transformation view of things. I love the idea of being a part of, let's think about Barclays of, or HABC. I'm not saying these are the clients that I have worked for, but I'm just giving you an idea. Let's say they are trying to implement a new system and they really want to know, okay, um, can you, can you help us through that whole process? Can you help us navigate and figure out what kind of like um, controls we should be implementing? What kind of like recommendations you think you can be giving us and all of that stuff. This is when we can come in and we can work together for us to get to a common end goal. Um, and that's just an example. So that's what I find to be really interesting is for you to be sitting with the key people in the business, like I have said, trying to understand what are you, what, what is your end goal? What are you trying to achieve? And for us to try to figure out how can we actually help you achieve that. that is the part that I like and it's very strategic focused and that works for me because I don't know if you guys know this but my masters is specifically focused in strategic reporting which is why this side of things and this um, service line is something that I really like because it's 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 very strategic focused it's about sitting with the clients trying to figure out what you're trying to achieve and how we can work together for us to ultimately achieve that I like that and you know what one thing about audit and nothing against audit it's like people look at you like you're like the FBI <laughs> it's like you know it's a lot of the times the client is, is like oh shikes like we are coming to be audited and they have their their guards up um, while it's in in the assurance side of things from my experience um, we are trying to achieve a common goal so they want you to be there um, and they recognize why you're there and it, it's not so I almost want to say they are, they are a little bit more receptive to the recommendations that you may put your way while it's in audit people are probably like mm, this finding is probably gonna have consequences <laughs> I don't want it to be there and it, it, it can sometimes be a very pull and push relationship which I wouldn't say I have experienced in the assurance side of things so far but like I said the two worlds are not mutually exclusive so yeah this is why I moved to this department and like I've, I have mentioned before I am still working with insurance clients um, so the two worlds like I said are not mutually exclusive I have the PCOV audit going on at the moment obviously controls the controls piece is quite important and I currently have um, another um, engagement that I'm working on at the moment and the controls piece is equally important so the two roles are not mutually exclusive um, why did I what is what is my common goal why did I why did I actually decide to 
make this decision. Strengthening my skills. It's basically what I am trying to do. You need to know where you're going and you need to you need to start there. You need to be like, this is where I want this is what I want to achieve in the next 10 years, and this is where I want to be in the next 10 years. And then you start working your way up and you need to be like what can i do down here for me to make to make sure that once i get here i have all the skills for me to be able to be the best whatever that you want to be and this is why i made the decision that i made today and it's basically in line with why i also made the decision to move to the insurance department it's i want to specialize and you know um when you specialize you pick up things much faster and because you're exposed to a whole load of the same stuff you really become specialized in your area so for me it's all about that it's having an idea of where you want to be and trying to do the best that i potentially can do for me to be a specialist in that area so that's why i actually made this decision it's like audit is great um and you learn a whole lot and like i said it's really beneficial but i wanted to specialize it's the same reason why i moved from audit channel to insurance because i wanted to specialize in insurance and once i got to insurance i started realizing what am i actually interested in um and what do i want to specialize in and this is when i ended up focusing on financial transformation and the control fees that's not to say that my mind is not going to change i think i'm lucky enough to work in a firm where there's so there are so many um different departments um and i really think that your leaders are very receptive for you have for you to have conversations with them and for you to say i want to be exposed to this i want to be exposed to that and for as long as you have this conversation conversations there's no reason why they're not going to be trying to open those doors for you um again just make sure that you're good at your job um and yeah i try to leverage off that and i think i work in a company where i have this benefit and i can really try to use it um to my best advantage it can be very tricky because at the end of the day when you sit in a division it's very really, it's sometimes difficult for a division to give you to somebody to another division um, for a lot of reasons. But I, again, think I'm lucky enough to work for a firm that recognizes it's not isolated. And this is what I have experienced working with my leaders is that um, they don't look at their div division in an isolated way. It's not like, oh, I am the partner in the insurance division. So I just need to make sure that I just keep people in the insurance division. That hasn't been my experience. So the very contrary, it's like, you know, they see themselves as a partner in the all overall firm. So if you go and you have an idea and you're like, I think I can bring the skills that I have learned in this division to another department. Um, can you help me try to achieve this sort of thing? They can be very receptive to help you, to help you achieve that. You just need to make sure that you're having those conversations. So I think if I am to leave you guys with a piece of advice and not that I am a guru, but you know, I do... I do think I have achieved quite a lot in my career and I don't I don't downplay that downplay that I am grateful for that. So if I can give you a little piece of advice is that you need to know where you're going and you need to make sure that every single decision that you make and wherever you are today is helping you achieve that end goal. If you feel that you are not satisfied or that it's not serving your interests, then you need to make a different decision and you need to assess how can I move? What can I do for me to ultimately get to where I want to be? So that is my overall advice to you. But just has like some sort of like a summary as to where I'm at right now. Yes, I have left audit, but not completely. I now work for a different division. And I do think that that was the best decision that I made for myself. But then again, I love to work. <laughs> I love the fact that my brain is continuously working and that I'm continuously learning new things. So yeah, this is basically me. And oh, my feet hurt. And this is like a summary as to where I'm at right now. And I hope that you guys find this useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. And this is why I'm here, is to give you some sort of like career guidance and all of that. But so I hope you like this. Bye.